All entrepreneurs entering the den believe they have what it takes to entice the dragons and secure an investment. Next up is prolific product designer Chris Ellsworthy, who thinks he has a world's first in the DIY market. But will offering just 5% of his company be enough to tempt the dragons? Hello, my name's Christopher Ellsworthy. I'm inventor, MD, and designer for C Enterprise. I would like to ask you for £150,000 in return for 5% of my business. The Power 8 Workshop is an innovative four-piece cordless power tool set with a unique ability to transform each of its handheld tools into their benchtop equivalents. For example, the drill can be used by itself or transforms with the case into a drill press by simply placing this separate spirit level into the back of the case, connecting the drill here. There's eight functions in total for this case, including a circular saw, which when combined with the case, becomes a table saw. It all runs cordlessly from the two handles that are supplied with it. And when packed, it's one of the smallest four-piece cordless power tool on the market. We are rapidly growing. The Parrot Workshop is our first product. And with this product alone, in the last year and a half, we've turned over 2.7 million pounds with a gross profit of 25%. I look for your help to push my company to the next level. I'd like to answer all your questions and please feel free to look at any of my products. A deft presentation from Bristol-based Christopher Ellsworthy. He needs £150,000 to turn his extensive collection of cordless DIY tools into a worldwide brand and is willing to give away 5% in return. You make all of these products? Uh, yes, they are our own products. Your design? Yes. And what's your favourite product? Multitool. This is a, a lithium-ion DC multi-tool. Peter Jones is first to question the inventor. This product I've just picked up, can you treat me like a three-year-old? Okay. I've no idea what this is. Unlike normal and conventional saws, there's no rotating output. The output shaft moves backwards and forwards very quickly. So on that output shaft, you can put a number of different applications, including a uh, saw blade or a sanding pad. Wow. Have a look at that. And why are you so proud of this? Um, because we've been demonstrating it a lot at trade shows. It's very functional, very light, very robust, it's really well made, and it's going really well down with DIY enthusiasts and tradesmen alike. It looks fantastic. I mean, you demonstrated the multi-box. Is that what it's called? Multi the Power 8 Workshop, because of its eight functions. So you and get a drill? Batteries. A drill, uh, a jigsaw, a circular saw, and a torch. On the back, there are further accessories, including drills and drivers, which the customer can take out and use separately. To design something like this, which is practical. That's great British know-how. Thank you. I mean, it's fabulous. Christopher's products have clearly impressed the dragons. Now, James Kahn wants more detail on the company financials. Hi, Chris. I'm James. Hi, James. Just give me a quick breakdown. It was 150,000 for five percent. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, which roughly values the business at how much? Three million. Three million. And the GP that you've generated is about 700,000? Uh, uh, yes, in the, f in the first year and a half. And on that 700,000, Chris, did you make a profit? Um, last year we made a loss, 55,000 pounds. And what's your forecast? Uh, Turnover and profit? This year it will be um, 3 million. You'll convert that into a profit of? The net profit should hopefully be around 450,000. Roughly how many people does the business employ? Um, directly, probably about 10 in total. The company is, just, is broken into smaller parts. We have an office, a company in uh, Hong Kong, a company in the UK, and one in Czech Republic. Um, my partner in Hong Kong, he handles the cash flow, logistics, and uh, sells the products from Hong Kong company. 
The projections have gone down well in the den, but the disclosure of an absent but key business partner is unsettling for a potential investor. Theo Pafitis demands more information. Right, who owns the business? Who owns business? Yes. Um, I own uh, 51% in the UK, 36%. Oh, whoa, 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 slow down, I'm not that fast. So you own 51% of the UK business. Yeah. Yeah. And 36% of the uh, U, uh, Hong Kong company. 36% of Hong Kong. Yeah. So, if I party with my kids' hard-earned inheritance, who am I in business with? Uh, you'll be taking uh, a part of the top company, which is a BVI company, which owns all the other companies. And who owns the BVI company? My partner and uh, another investor. So the BVI company owns the other 49% of the UK? Yes. 64% of Hong Kong? Yes. Do you own all the IP rates yourself? The Hong Kong company has all the IP for the companies. God, this is really difficult. There's a US company as well. Ah, oh, so who owns that one? That's also owned by the BVI company. And what percentage? 90% uh, by the BVI, 10% uh, by the guy that works for us in the um, US. So you don't own any of the US then? No. So why... You, if you don't own any of the US, why... OK. I'm a product design engineer. My trade and expertise is in designing and inventing products. I'm not a natural businessman. If I came today and offered you just the UK company... But you haven't, and you I can't. Know, but because I thought if I came here today and just offered you the UK company, we wouldn't, you wanted a piece... You we wouldn't, you're piece absolutely right. We wouldn't be able to invest in a UK company because it doesn't own the IP rights. So you've got yourself in an uninvestable position. To say, give me 150 grand for 5% of this, that and the other, and several partners out there, we're just asking for trouble. You're asking us not just to give you £150,000, but actually give us a massive headache. And that's why I'm going to say I'm out. Thank you for your time. See you. Setting up a holding company in the British Virgin Islands is not an unknown practice for a global business, but the complicated structure of share ownership has cost Christopher his first dragon. And it's moved Deborah Meaden to make up her mind too. You are very puzzling. You start off, it's very impressive, you've got really good product there, and when you're demonstrating the product, you're very impressive. However, you've got an incredibly complex structure. You, you must, before you go to bed at night, think, who owns what? What shareholder am I? I question why it is so blinking complex. And for that reason, I'm out. Thank you for your time, Deborah. Um, I thought you did a fantastic presentation. You, you came in, it was sharp, eloquent, Bingo, I got it, and I thought that that box was amazing, really good. So, in a way, I think you almost got a deal when you finished your pitch. Ever since that point, it seems to have gone downhill, and for those reasons, I'm out. Thank you for your time. Pleasure, Chris. Two more dragons walk away from the deal, and the nervy inventor's chances of investment are looking slim. Will Peter Jones agree with his rival's concerns? Let's look at the facts. Okay. You've, you, you've got a business at the moment that is currently a 55k loss. Yes. You've got shares that are owned by various people. You have other investors. However, the good things that you've got is you. You're the real value here and the products that you've created to date absolutely some of the best products I've ever seen come into the den. Thank you very much. I think you are a product genius. Thank you. So, this BVI company, yes. do you understand what I mean when I say a holding company? Yes. The holding company owns certain other businesses, doesn't Correct. it? Correct, yes. The forecast that you gave us, will the BVI company make £450,000 net profit? Is that yes, right? Yes, it will. I'm going to presuppose certain things and I'm going to make you directly an offer. OK. So my offer to you is the full amount of money for 40% of the holding company. I want all of the rights to the product transferred into the holding company. 
That is exactly the plan I had if I, I mean, had I would like you to go very quietly back to your garage and stay in there and focus on what you're good at. It's a dramatic turnaround. Christopher now has a full offer, but for eight times more equity than he was initially prepared to give away. Will the budding entrepreneur be able to negotiate himself a better deal? That values my company an extremely low amount. Um, really? What do you think that values your company at by getting me involved? Well, I don't know. I've never worked with you so far. So, for your 40%, what resources will you put towards the company to drive it forward? You've got a lot to sort out in terms of where these products can be sold. To make profit, you need sales. To get sales, you need me. Um, I'm not prepared to give away 40% of my company. I'm, I agree with Peter. I think, I think you're, you're a great designer. It's a great product. Thank you. Um, I think his figures were a little bit on the tight side, but yours are too much the other way. I would value the company at £150,000, not for 40%, but I'd value it at 30%. And I'd be willing to offer you half the money for 15% under the same conditions and criteria that Peter's already laid out. Thank you for your offer. Um, I still think that's extremely undervaluing my company. I'll tell you what, I would be willing to... Duncan's going to have to potentially agree to this, so you have to talk to him. What about if, we off, if I offer you half the money for 15%, so you give away 30% of the overall, but the minute that you repay that money, you go back and you get down to your 20%. Yes. I think it's your turn to speak, Duncan. It's a great deal. Don't forget, you're going to make a £450,000 profit in this business if this works. I can't wait to have a meeting with you and show you the figures on paper. We can't wait to make you a multimillionaire, Christopher. Um, it's a deal. A deal? A deal. It was a tense negotiation, but Christopher has done it. He walks away with a plan to simplify his company and with two new multimillionaire business partners. Well, Chris, very well done. Thank you very much. I mean, this company, just take me through how you're going to simplify this unwieldy arrangement. Uh, well, basically, we'll take uh, everything and all the different elements of the company now move all the shares into the top level company and that's where the dragons will sit. Are you happy with the deal? Yeah, I mean obviously I have to give things away to make things work so um, and that's what we're doing here today. If you want to make the business successful it's better to have a, a small piece of something large than a large piece of nothing. We wish you all the very best. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks.